have Easter. We celebrate this great feast, the uh, eighth day of the octave, the greatest day of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. This Mass we prayed for the living intention of Tammy and Mark Hinkle, and the deceased intention will be for all the souls buried in our, our cemeteries. We'll pray our prayer to our late most admirable, and also we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet uh, so that we can work the plenary indulgence of this uh, great Easter feast. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We pray together. Mother most admirable, treasure of calm and serenity, we love her for the light of the Lord's eyes, for the peace radiating from her countenance, for her well-being, which reveals the inner fullness of grace. She is the virgin of the invisible and of the essential. We ask her to detach us from the visible, to lead us on, and to fix our gaze on the invisible, on which her eyes are fixed. The visible presence, the visible life, the visible action, and the invisible love. In the midst of non-essentials, which invite to know and beguile us, may she give us a right understanding of the essential and a hunger for it. Amen. And ask that next to the meal if you're able for the praying of the divine mercy check. Father, we work for the fifth work of this plenary indulgence and the recitation of the divine mercy chaplain for that soul of purgatory that we love the most and we should make, we should make them a saint in your glorious kingdom. We all call that first soul of mine. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Does not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. I believe God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by our conscious life, was crucified. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of Almighty. There he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the blessed. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity, and dear the beloved Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who told us for our sins, the sins of the whole world, for the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us, now and the world. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us, now and the world. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us, now and the world. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us, now and the world. For the sake of the soul of passion, for the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. Eternal Father, you offer the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, for the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. Eternal Father, I offer you body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atonement for our sins, the sins of the whole world. For the sake of the soul of passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of the soul of passion, 
Salvo o Virgem. Para sempre, 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 salve o Virgem. Para sempre, salve o Virgem. Eternal Father, in all the blood, soul and divinity, your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is only for our sins, who sins the whole world. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. Father, I offer you body and blood, soul and divinity, your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is only for our sins, sins of the world, for the sake of the salve of passion, 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 for the sake of the salve of passion. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin. For the sake of the salve of the Virgin.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all Happy Easter. So we celebrate this greatest day of the Easter octave, Divine Mercy Sunday. Thank God for His benevolent love, and mercy that He gives each one of us, especially to that soul that we pray for in purgatory. They might enter into the glory of God. Let's call to mind our own sins. The times that we've not admitted our brokenness, come before our Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to have mercy upon us, to heal our souls. It's times that we have failed to come to this altar to receive the magnanimous love of Jesus Christ in this universe. I confess. For Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned. In my thoughts, through my words, what I've done, what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. And Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our lasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for a great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. And let us pray. Divine Mercy readings can be found in your lectionary on page 345. 345. Let's hear for our readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. They had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. They were distributed to each according to me. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give 
thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. When he had said this, he 
showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. And whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger into the nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in His name. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Easter. Our homily for Divine Mercy Sunday comes from I Thirst, Day 30. On the evening of that first day of the week. I've always been fascinated by the wounds of Christ. Not so much that our Lord incurred them at Calvary. It's not what fascinates me. What fascinates me is that even now, at the right hand of the Father in the glory of heaven, Jesus still has the wounds in his hands and feet and side. Why is that? Why would the risen and ascended Christ keep the wounds that the Roman soldiers and indeed you and I gave to our Lord? We are the ones by our sins that pounded the nails into his hands and feet. We did that. Whenever we sin, Why would Jesus keep these wounds? He's glorified. We know that Jesus has these wounds because after wishing the apostles peace on two consecutive Sundays following the resurrection, he showed them his hands and his side. Jesus petitioned Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Place your hand in my 
this eye. I still bear these wounds. Why? Why does the resurrected and glorified body of Jesus still bear the wounds of the crucifixion? St. Paul? St. Francis of Assisi? St. Catherine of Siena? St. Rita? St. Gemma Galgani, whose feast day is today. St. Faustina, St. Padre Pio. These are all people who God has given the special honor to bear the stigmata. See what an honor. 
honor it is to be Catholic, to receive the stigmata every time you eat the Eucharist. Yes, Christ carried the cross once up Mount Calvary, suffered crucifixion, died and was buried, rose again on the third day. Jesus did these things once for all. But the Catholic Church emphatically states, and she has since the beginning of time, that the Christ continues to carry the cross. Jesus continues to have the nails driven into his hands and feet. Jesus continues to accept the wounds of the crucifixion, to die and to rise from the dead. The Son of God does this in the sacrament of the Eucharist of the Catholic Mass. He does these things in an unbloodied way. Whenever you receive the Eucharist, His passion and his love for mankind goes on because you decided to come to Mass today. Do you see that? Jesus Christ would not be able to love mankind and to suffer if you didn't come to Mass today and receive the Eucharist. He would remain locked in that tabernacle, unable to save mankind. God saves the world through you. St. Teresa asked the question on day 30. Did you receive the Eucharist today? Then God gave you the special honor to bear the stigmata. And that's why I don't mind giving you the Eucharist on the palm of your hand during the pandemic. Even though I prefer to place the consecrated host on your tongue, because that's the way for 2,000 years the Catholic Church has fed us the Eucharist. All the saints in heaven today receive the Eucharist on their tongue. Interesting, isn't it? But I don't mind giving you the Eucharist on the palm of your hand because that forces you to see the hole in your left hand when you lift the host to your tongue with your right hand. You see the stigmata when you remove the Eucharist from your hand and put it on your tongue. That's what Mother Teresa said. You share in the sufferings of the Son of God. He has given you His wounds. You are stigmatists. I love how in John's Gospel, the beloved disciple keeps referring to time, to the hour of the day. We saw it on Easter Sunday with Mary Magdalene going to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark. We see it today on Divine Mercy Sunday. On the evening of the first day of the week, Jesus came and stood in their midst. 
Remember in John's Gospel where Jesus says to his mother, My hour has not yet come. Remember that? Time is so key to our salvation. Jesus came into the world at a specific time, in a specific place, to show us his Father's love for us, to tell us of God, the Father's thirst for your love. Mother Teresa's spirituality is teaching us that you came into the world at a specific time. Mother Teresa's spirituality is teaching us that you came into the world at a specific place as a parishioner of Our Lady of Perpetual Help in Sublet, Illinois, to share in Jesus' hour and to satisfy, to proclaim, and to channel into a thirsty world the love that God has for us. Do you see what an honor God the Father is giving you by allowing you to receive Holy Communion this hour in this church and so sanctify the world. Do you see what dignity has bestowed upon you? By allowing you to come to the Catholic Mass and receive Jesus wanted the disciples to see his hands and to see his side. Jesus, according to Caravaggio, guided the hand of St. Thomas into his side and allowed St. Thomas's finger to probe the nail marks of the Lord's hands. And I, as your priest, I'm always looking at my hands, albeit the backs of them. Because one day, back in May of the year 2005, Bishop Dorn lathered my hands in sacred chrism oil, and now 8,576 times later, I have held my hands over bread and over wine. Eucharist continues Jesus' glory and sufferings. It's our Lord's mission to suffer and to show love. And He's given that mission to you. You are to suffer. So St. Teresa says, let us rejoice in our sufferings. Whatever our cross is, whatever our vocation, the wounds that God has given us, let us bear them with dignity. Mother says, smile with joy at your afflictions. Because the wounds in your hands and your feet and your side are the seeds of your resurrection. I would say the stigmata that you bear are the seeds of the resurrection of the people that you love. Because that person 
person sitting next to you will not get into heaven unless you receive the Eucharist and pour out Christ's love upon them. You and I will one day show our wounds to Jesus at our judgment. Imagine this, at your judgment, Jesus will come forward and he will show you the hands, bear the wounds, he will show you his wound inside. And then you will show Jesus the wounds in your own hands, the wound in your own side. And then together, you and the Lord will stand before God the Father. And you will satisfy the Almighty's thirst for your love. Because you bore the stigmata. Our Lady Perpetual Help, pray for us. St. Mary the Assumption, pray for us. St. Patrick, St. Joseph, St. Faustina, St. John Paul the Great, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in our baptisms, so that we may walk with Him in a new disappointment. So now that our Lenten observances are concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and we promise to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask each one of you, do you renounce Satan? And all his works, and all of his empty show. Do you believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is what your parents promised for you at your baptism. This is what you promised on the day of your confirmation to your bishop. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. The greatest day of the Easter octave, today, Divine Mercy Sunday, we call out with our Easter joy to our risen and glorified Lord. Lord Jesus, you thank your eternal Father for the gift of your human body. And even now, in your glory at the Father's right hand, you continue to bear the marks of the passion. Help us to be thankful for our bodies that you have given to us. May we bear with dignity the wounds of our passionate love for you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, may we never take you for granted in the gift of your body and blood in Holy Communion, but may we invite you into our hearts at every Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus, on this greatest day of the Easter feast. Thank you for allowing us to work upon our indulgence for that one soul that we love most in purgatory. Help us to have a detachment from our own sins, to confess our sinfulness in the sacrament of reconciliation, and so eat your body and drink your blood in a state of grace for our beloved. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We thank our Holy Father for opening up the treasury of the Catholic Church's storehouse of grace on this Divine Mercy Sunday. And we gladly pray in our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Lord be, for the Holy Father's private intentions. We pray to the Lord. And so in love with our beloved dead, and eager to see them again in Easter glory, we pray for the repose of the soul that we will work this Divine Mercy indulgence for, and for all of our beloved dead, especially those buried in our Catholic cemetery. Turn the rest around to them, O Lord, let perpetual light shine on them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We pray that we should hold the in prayer for the same birth of that baby that we spiritually adopted. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I love you very much. I beg you to spare the life of Son, the unborn baby that I have spiritually adopted, is in name of abortion. We pray a Hail Mary prayer for the intercessory prayer of our Lady Most Admirable and her humble servant, St. Teresa, that through their encouragement, we would relish the Eucharist, sharing in the life and in the sufferings of Jesus Christ, all of the Father's thirst for our love would be quenched. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear to answer all of these prayers to grant them through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our preparation of the altar. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and Holy Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, but of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who have brought to me. 
on earth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the writing just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard your united government throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis and Pope and David our permission all those holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially Mark and Tammy Hinkle, all the Christians are related to perpetual helps of Lent, St. Mary the Sunday Church of Brooklyn, St. Patrick's Church of Town. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving the thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from you. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death to the Lord until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, all holy sacrifice, the spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask the Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, to this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially the soul that we work this plenary indulgence for, all buried in our Catholic cemeteries. They've gone before us with the sign of faith. They now rest in the sea. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, and those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Brett, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not laying our merits, granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. We sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Hallelujah. Now we'll pay our 
here to communion prayer for that person that will work the plenary indulgence of Divine Mercy Sunday for. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since other people dear to me cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come and be spiritually into their hearts. As though you were already in our hearts, help us to embrace you and unite ourselves wholly to you. Permit not that we should never be separated from you.
How will prayer occur at Thanksgiving? My Jesus, my love and adore you. You have come to me. I am with you. I want you to remain with me forever, in this life and in the next. Thank you for allowing me to share your life. May I become more like you through this sacred food. Let me never take you for granted, but always pray for those whose lives are dark with sin and ignorance and selfishness. And let me remember the words of St. Paul, that there for the grace of God go I. Each day I can become more like you, Lord, and each day I can pray for those who have never heard of your presence in the Eucharist, or who have heard it and rejected it. Let's pray. Grant me pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. In order to work the plenary indulgence of all of this Mass today, we pray those prayers for the Holy Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. What a great day, Divine Mercy Sunday, to bring one of our beloved dead into the glory of heaven. Wishing a happy Easter to all of you. I'd like you to pray for our ushers as well when you say your night prayers today. Remember, if I said it uh, once, I've said it a hundred times. If we didn't have our ushers uh, to sanitize the church after Mass, we wouldn't be able to have the Mass. So Mark and Tammy Hankel are usually our ushers at this Mass. They uh, finally took a vacation day from uh, being the ushers. So uh, just conclude them in your prayers. There's a new uh, uh, sanitization uh, process that they have now that involves a mister or flogger. Uh, so they, in order to do that new procedure, uh, everyone has to be out of the church before they do that. So if uh, you could uh, help uh, the ushers in the future by uh, exiting the church, remember the exit is from the back pews forward, and then uh, if you wouldn't uh, uh, you refrain from conversation inside the church and even on the ramp, sanitizing. So they come early to Mass to see us, and then they're here well after we've gone home, sanitizing the church. I think uh, one of the things that we can do for them is just to include them in our night prayer, and uh, also to uh, you know, exit the church expediently after the Mass. Okay. Thank you for uh, bearing with us in these procedures that we have because of the pandemic. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's Easter blessing and this greatest day in the octave, Divine Mercy Sunday. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in His compassion defend you and your family from every assault of sin. Amen. And may God always restore you to eternal life in the resurrection of His only begotten Son and endow upon you the prize of immortality which you hand over the soul that you work today's plenary indulgence for. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may God help you to celebrate with gladness of your heart these Paschal feasts, which coming with Christ's help and exalting in the Spirit, you will celebrate for eternity in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel. Listen that. The hour of protection against the wickedness and snares of death. May God be with you and come to your bread. May thou and the Son of heaven host. By the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, all the evil spirits. Prowl about the world, speak of your souls. Session of the is there's a wise and